and a friend felt like we were supposed to go on a two-week visit into Iran and uh, had a great time and uh, fell in love with the country, fell in love with the people. While we were leaving the country, it was crossing the border. We hand in our documents to be stamped out of the country and we didn't get them back. And it was about six hours later that they finally came back to us and said, there's a problem with your documents. And the reality is that I had dealt with before I went, like what if you have a problem? What if there could be complications being an American? Yeah, it all came to the surface. And I realized, wow, I could really have a problem like this is for real. And um, yeah, in my walk with the Lord and in many dangerous places, I've always seen God come through. And all of a sudden, the thought hit me, well, what if this is different? They separated me and my friend, took me into another room, and there they beat me for about six hours, kicking me and hitting me. After those six hours, they dragged me back down to the lobby where I met my friend again who had been beaten in another room. They put us in prison clothes, and they blindfolded us again, and then they led us down this basement, and they put me into one prison cell and my friend into another one. And there I was in prison in Iran. It was out of my hands. There was nothing I could do. Either God would do a miracle or I would stay there. There was no sense of feeling God. I, I felt like God was far away. All I could really trust in was his character and that his character would be true no matter what I was feeling and no matter what circumstance I was going through. They put me in a cell in isolation, had a light in one corner, and that was on 24 hours a day. It was in the winter time, there was actually snow outside, but the heater didn't work well. They only let me out of the room to be interrogated, which was once a day or sometimes not at all. And then they would lead me down this hallway and take me into the interrogation room, which was an ugly room. It had blood stains on the floor, very dark and murky. It was definitely the most terrifying part of the whole experience. The beatings would start and it would be slapping in the face, hitting in the stomach sometimes kicking. I struggled with faith. Uh, was God with me? Did he love me? If God's good, why would he allow me through the situation? And I remember one day I woke up and I was done, you know, inside. And I remember waking up that day thinking to myself, if I'm going to be here the rest of my life, why not check out? My only thought was not to stay there. And the only way not to stay there was to die. I, I stuck my head in the sink, I filled it up and tied one end to a bracket, put it over my head and then hopefully would tie the other end tight thinking that, you know, with my head in the water, in a few minutes I'd be gone. Four times I tried to kill myself, but every time I tried I was too scared to tie the other end. And I'll never forget the last time. Again I tried, again I was like, come on, do it, and again I just couldn't do it, I couldn't tie it tight. And I remember at that moment jerking my head out of the water, and if I was ever aware of my brokenness, I was aware of it at that moment. And I remember falling down on the ground, and I was broken. And if I was ever aware of my shame, I was aware of my shame at that moment. And I remember lying down on the ground in that moment, all of a sudden the room fills with this glorious light. And I turn around to see what's going on and there is Jesus. And he's standing in front of me with this big grin and smile on his face. And it was at that lowest point that he met me. And he looks at me and he stretches out his hands and he puts them underneath me like this. And in the vision, as I see Jesus, he looks at me and says this. He says, Dan, I love you. And I promise to carry you through this time. And from that day until this day, I've never had those thoughts again. And that's who Jesus is. He meets us at our lowest and he can rescue us from the depths of us and he wants to give us life in the midst of the pain of life. And he meets us and he loves us and he wants to rescue us no matter what we're going through. God began to challenge me with his love for our enemies. And he said this, he's like, Dan, ask me what I think about 
this man. And he asked me the question about the man who was my interrogator, the man who beat me, the man who seemed to hate me the most. And it was a few days into it that I finally asked God, okay, yeah, what do you think of this man? And at that moment, yeah, my heart opened up and I began to see God's love for this man, how he loved him from the beginning, how he made him, how he loved his family. And I'll never forget the last day I saw him. I remember on this day thinking, oh my gosh, what's he going to do today? And at that moment, I remember looking at him and I said this. I said, sir, if I'm going to see you the rest of my life every day, why don't we become friends? He's like, no, that's impossible. And I said, sir, you can start by telling me your name. And I stuck out my hand to him and I said, sir, let's be friends. And as I stuck out my hand to shake his hand, he just stood there and he froze. And after a few minutes, he started to shake. And then all of a sudden, I saw his hand creep towards mine, and he shook my hand. And as he's shaking my hand, I saw these tears start to roll down his face. And for about 10 minutes, he just shook my hand, and tears streaming down his face. And he finally looks at me, and he says this. He's like, Dan, and he calls me by my name. My name is Razak, and I would love to be your friend. And it caused me to see that there is no heart too hard for Jesus. That he can change the hardest heart. God taught me to love my enemy. I heard these guards talking about the foreigners, me and my friend. They're Christians, they follow Jesus. And another one was said, oh, these foreigners, they knew they could have problems when they came here, but they have purpose. They've got a reason to live and a reason to die. And that's what I want. And I heard three of these men say, yeah, today we are going to follow Jesus. We are going to follow the way. And if that was part of the reason why God allowed me down there, I, yeah, so be it. And just like, yeah, those guards in prison, I, I long for people to know today how good Jesus is, that he can rescue us in the midst of pain, in the midst of our shame, our brokenness. He wants to meet us and that he is good no matter what we're going through and that he loves us. I found out indirectly that I was under two death sentences, one for being a missionary, one for being a spy. And again, in that prison, I heard executions, yeah, quite regularly. And it was my moment in a courtroom. I stood on the stand, hundreds of people in the room, video cameras, judges. And then came the question, tell us today, sir, why? Why did you come to Iran? Something rose up within me, that, yeah, the power of God. And I remember looking at the judge and saying this, I came to Iran to tell you about Jesus Christ. And when I said that, I'm like, oh, what did I say? <laughs> and all of a sudden, I said it again. And then I said it again. And then something started to grow in my heart. And for about 20 minutes, I just preached the gospel. And I told everyone in that courtroom, and I told everyone who could hear me all about who Jesus is, all about how much he loved him. All of a sudden, I realized something. I am free. I am free. So what if they kill me? My life is bought by the blood of Jesus. My home is in heaven, and no one can take that away. And I realized that in the midst of death itself, God gave me the grace to stand up and speak the truth. And in doing so, it brought freedom in my heart, knowing that this life isn't it. There is more, and I'm going home one day, and no one can take that away. My cell and uh, at this point my friend had been released he'd been released a few weeks before me I knew about that and again that brought questions of like why is he going and not me yeah it was just one morning where they just came to my cell and they opened it up they walked me down to this room and they said get dressed and I thought well this is my day of execution why else would I be getting dressed yeah I went to the courthouse where I'd been before and it was there that I sat down and in walks the uh, head judge of all the courts of Iran. And to my surprise, <laughs> he stands up and reads this testimony or this statement. And it basically said, because of our friendship with the nation of Switzerland, uh, again, I don't know if I mentioned it, but I've been, I've been traveling on a Swiss passport. My dad is Swiss. I'm a dual citizen. 
And uh, yeah, he says, because of our friendship with the nation of Switzerland, we choose to release Dan Bauman, and he's a free man. And I couldn't believe it. <laughs> and I thought I was going to die, and God said no. <laughs> and yeah, the Swiss ambassador was in the room, and he walks up to me, and he said, Mr. Bauman, you're coming with me. <laughs> and I'm like, yes, sir. <laughs> And I remember walking into his car and locking those doors. And yeah, that was the beginning of the rest of my life. You know, God rescuing me from myself, rescuing me from, from that prison cell. And for real, it was for real, I was free. That was the beginning of a new life. And the freedom to look at the sky and the freedom to go for a walk, the freedom to call a friend on the phone, and all the freedoms I'd taken for granted, God gave them all back to me. Yeah, there's challenges in our lives and there's challenges in the world, but God's great. And nothing compares to his greatness. Nothing compares to his power. And if he can pull me out of a prison cell three stories down in the middle of Iran with death sentences on my life, he can rescue anyone. And he can rescue us from whatever we're going through. And it just gave me a big picture of how, how great he is. <laughs>